Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Now in today's video, we're going to learn how to code a quiz application in Python. Now this is very similar to my C Sharp video about the quiz app and literally all it is is just a simple program. We're going to prompt the user for some questions. We're going to, you know, collect answers from them, test the answers against what we know to be the right answer, and then print out a simple score at the end. All right, so the very first thing I'm gonna do here is go ahead and open up Repl.it or whatever, you know, Python environment you want to use. I'm going to select Python. I'm going to call this quiz application. Go ahead and click create. All right, guys, now that we're in our program, let's just go ahead and start off by making a main method here. So if double underscore name is equal to, in quotes here, double underscore main underscore again, and then a colon. So now we have our main method here. And what we're gonna do first is create an array of questions. So we're just gonna say questions is equal to this array here. And it's going to be an array of strings and we're going to have three total questions. So we can go ahead and just make three different strings here. Now I'm going to go ahead and use the same questions I did in my other video just because it's simpler. So let me just go ahead and copy those in here. So here's the first question here. Here's our second one. Here is the third one. So these are just three questions that I had found from the internet. You can go ahead and use any questions that you would like. And then right after this, we're going to create an array called answers. And what this is going to do is provide the actual, you know, multiple choice options for each question. So once again, this is going to be an array full of strings. So let's just go ahead and make three different strings here. So once again, I'm going to go ahead and copy in the answers here. All right, guys, now I have all the answers inside of the answers array for these multiple choice questions above. So now let's go ahead and create an additional array. And this one is going to be called correct answers. And this is just going to be an array of integers that specifies which index holds the correct answer for each question. And what I'm going to put in here is just one, one, and then zero. And that's because in each scenario, so for the first question, um, B is the correct answer. For the second question here, index one would be B once again. And then for the last one, which one is universal donor, zero would be the correct index, which is um, O negative. And now that we have those all created, let's just go ahead and create a variable called player score and set that to zero. Th that way we can track how many answers that the um, player got correct. And now what we need to do is just go ahead and start, you know, asking the user for some questions. And you'll see here the, the IntelliSense or whatever you want to call it is actually trying to generate code that's pretty accurate to what we're going to be doing here. But before that, let's just go ahead and print out a simple welcome statement. We're going to be saying welcome to the best quiz app ever with a smiley face. So next up, we're going to need a loop of some sort to loop through our questions um, array. So what I'm going to say is for i in range and then parentheses and then length or len is short for length and then just questions. So it's basically going to, going to say like, hey, how long is the questions array? We know it's three um, indices. And then it's going to say, hey, from anything from zero to three, basically, that's how long this loop is going to run. Then don't forget, we need our colon to begin the actual loop. And the first thing we need to do when we get in here is go ahead and print out our first question. So we're going to say question, and then let's go ahead and say number, and then comma i plus one. The reason I'm doing plus one is because i will begin at zero, and it'd be weird if we we're like, hey, here's question zero. We really want to say, hey, here's question number one. So we're going to do that first. Then the next thing we're going to do is print out the actual question itself. So just go ahead and say question at i for this next line here. And my bad, I realized it's questions, not questions. So that's why it's throwing that little syntax here. And then the next thing after that is we're going to give them the multiple choice answers. So we're gonna say answers at i is the next thing we wanna do. And now what we need to do is go ahead and prompt the user to actually answer the question. So we're gonna say um, prompt user for answer. And now we're going to say um, user input is equal to input, which allows us to specify a string to show to the user and that it will collect um, actual keyboard arguments from the user. So what we're going to say here is please answer the question with like a little caret symbol in a space. And you know what, why don't we also tell them what to put here? So we'll say, hey, you know, put A, B, or C. 
and that way they you know know exactly what to put in here and just in case they decide to you know let's say they say a but they don't put a capital a let's make sure that we um, handle that case and just say dot upper that way it will capitalize any input that they give so if, you know either if they put a lowercase letter or a capital letter it will always be capital that way we can easily compare it to the proper answer and then determine if they're correct or not all right guys now that we've printed out all the questions and the answers let's just go ahead and add a comment here we're going to validate the input from the user so the first thing we're going to say is hey if the um, user input that they've provided is equal to the letter a and the correct answers array that we created from earlier at i is equal to zero meaning that they answered um a and a correlates to the first index of you know our, our answers array so what i mean by that is zero is a one is b and two is c so if our correct answers at i so if this is question number zero um, if correct answers at zero so this one right here is zero then they will have a correct answer but if it's one or something else then they will not now that we have that out of the way let's just go ahead and add our other else ifs before we define what we're doing inside of each one so the second else if here is going to be extremely similar just go ahead and copy this and instead of a we're going to put b and instead of zero we're going to put one put another colon here and then copy it one more time so if the user input is C and the correct answer is two, then we want to do something else. And then finally, else, if they answer anything besides those possible answers, we're just going to print invalid input, please try again. So now that all that's out of the way, and Python sure is complaining that, you know, we haven't um, put anything inside of these, so it, it's, you know, all confused. So the only thing we actually have to do inside of each one of these is just literally increment the player score because they got it correct. So we're going to say plus equals um, one for the player score. And we're going to just put this exact same line inside of each area. And there we go. Even though it gives a, you the squiggly lines, it's just only doing that because you can use an or. You know, could put you could put all of these inside of one if statement, but I think it's a little better and cleaner looking if you just split it out into multiple if else's. All right, now that will actually wrap up the main part of the for loop here. Now let's just go down to the bottom, exit the actual loop. And then now that the game is over, let's just go ahead and print out, you know, a simple um, line to the user saying that it's over. So let's say, hey, quiz completed, the smiley face. And then let's say another print line here. Your score is, and then we're going to have a zero and a one here inside of these brackets. And then we're going to call dot format and then tell it which variables we'd like to put in place of this and this. And also put a little divider symbol between these two, because ultimately what we want to do is print one out of three or two out of three as their score. You know, um, the very first variable you want to print is player score. And then the second one is going to be the length of the questions array. And that way it's dynamic. So if you want to add more questions, it'll, you don't need to update this manually. And yeah, it'll just you know get the length here, which is three. So ultimately we'll say, you know, one out of three, two out of three or whatever the score is. All right, guys, one more thing to do before we launch our program. Actually, I just realized we don't even need this else here because I just realized if they put something else besides A, B, or C, it will hit this else. And then it'll kind of let them know that they got that question wrong. We don't want to do that till the end. You know, we just want to really minimize what we're printing out to the user um, during the test or the quiz. <laughs> and uh, yeah, all we really need is these three simple um, if and else if statements here for it to work properly. So now that, now that that's out of the way, let's just go ahead and run our application, make sure that works. So the very first question here, Welcome to the best quiz app ever. Which book holds the record for the fastest selling book in history? Um, let's just say I don't know the answer and I'll go just go ahead and answer C. Move on to the next one. How old was Queen Elizabeth? Uh, I don't know, 24. Which blood type is a universal donor? Let's just do A. So now that we see your score is two out of three. And that is correct because I really did get two out of three. Um, I don't remember which one I was wrong on, probably the first question, but I do believe that Queen Elizabeth took over 24 and um, O negative is correct. So there we have it. Our application works. We had fun while doing it. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. 
Comment your thoughts or questions down below in the comments and I'll try to get back to you. And with that being said, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.